As the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will only go as fast As the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will be easy on I will be easy on myself And I love myself like a newborn baby child I will be easy on myself I will be easy on myself And I love myself
Everyone wishes to live their best life. We experiment with various ways to achieve that. Whether it is through study, competing, finding a partner, working hard, or admiring someone who inspires you, it is the quality of our inner being that does it all, or grapples with fulfilling life's calling. For the past 20 years, the Brahma Kumaris in Washington, D.C. has been a space for any and everyone to enter into and experience one's soul calling. From 1997, the center opened in an old rickety house on Georgia Avenue in Silver Spring, Maryland, where cars and trucks that passed by would shake the space. But when you were inside, it was a peaceful and powerful sanctuary for all who visited. Since then, over 2,500 events, 17 city and nationwide initiatives, 21 awards, two meditation museums have served youths, senior citizens, entrepreneurs, scientists, authors, women, interfaith, the disabled, environment, small businesses, arts seekers, and even leaders. Millions of lives have been served, either through social media, the popular America Meditating Radio Show, or through exhibitions, lectures, partnerships, and programs held in the meditation museums and centers. We look at 20 years of service as a continued journey of love, courage, wisdom, and determination with friends from diverse backgrounds and thought who believe a better world is possible when we make ourselves better human beings. Meditation is an important tool that helps us to gain greater clarity, insights, and inner power so we can make healthy choices and amplify our capacity to live a full life. In times of great anxiety, insecurity, and fear, meditation is an essential practice for everyone to gain stability and inner strength. Just look at what a few dedicated, purposeful, and kind group of committed people have been able to achieve in 20 years. Thanks to everyone who have supported us along the way and thanks in advance to those who believe in our work and power of intent. Brahma Kumari's Meditation Museums, where peace is inside. Om Shanti, everyone. Welcome back to your next normal. I'm your host, Sister Jenna. We've been appreciating this whole week's um, programs or classes of the Foundation Course in Raj Yoga Meditation. And we've decided to dedicate at least five days to invite our friends and fans and family members to really undergo the deep philosophy of Raj Yoga taught by the Brahma Kumaris. 
So many of our over one million students, the genesis of their spiritual growth and development is from the, the roots of Raj Yoga meditation and their consistent daily practice and teachings um, in the study as it goes on. So we thought amongst ourselves here that one of the things we actually haven't done is offered the Raj Yoga meditation course. And so I really hope everyone's enjoying it. I know that it really gets to the root of everything. And so it invites you to start to really deeply percolate certain truths that are inherent within you. And we're also extending it that if you do do the five classes, you will then get onto a Zoom call with me and we will talk about going into further advanced studies of the philosophy of Raj Yoga and the Brahma Kumaris. Every Brahma Kumar or Kumari instrument, teacher, student that you have gotten any bit of wisdom or advice from or um, even vibrations from, it came from the Raj Yoga course. It actually was the opening of their consciousness and the opening of their third eye where they really started to see things that weren't just based on these two eyes, but it was based on the third eye, the eye of wisdom, the eye of knowledge. So welcome back, and I'm glad that you could continue the sessions. If you've been with us since the beginning in part one, we're now in part three, and it's a big popular one on karma. So many individuals are always intrigued about the philosophy of karma and what it all means. And we do have a kind of a stereotype that when we say karma, we think it's something bad. No. Karma means you are, you are going through what you're going through as a result of the choices that you've made, but also the intention of the choices that you've made. And it's karma. So the real, like break it down, the simplistic <coughs> definition of karma, actions. What actions are you performing? And those leave a sort of a ripple effect in the soul. They leave a memory in the soul, you know. We are carrying the vibrations of everything that we have felt. Can you believe that? And the world is functioning based on the collective energy of karma between souls. You as an individual, but collectively as an energy. So let's say I as an individual am a very peaceful soul then I will attract peaceful people. But there will be one or two that might not be peaceful. And they will come to stand in front of me to help me to recall if I'm truly rooted in my religion or my personality of peace, or do I pick up their karmic energy and make it my own and shift my whole world? Which is what makes this whole thing so fascinating in terms of how we're relating and connecting to each other has so much to do with your intentions, but also it has a lot to do with the first lesson. Know who you are. I am a peaceful, pure, and powerful soul. And so even if somebody comes in front of me without that vibration or that feeling, I won't lose my identity. When I lose my identity, I realize that I need a lot more power in believing and experiencing who I really am. In order to get that power, we go to God, we go to Baba, Allah, Jehovah, Krishna, Lord, Kadu, um, Bhagwan, Khuda, whatever are the myriad of names that we call out to God, it's all linguistic, geographic too. Based on where you're located, the culture, the language, we interpret God based on that, but the energy of God is one. So we also covered the whole notion that God is the supreme energy, the supreme being, an ocean of love and peace and purity. And if I, the soul, can create the pure karma of thinking and connecting to that source of energy and performing actions that feel like it's really governed by the source of that energy, then it's almost as if every good karma that I perform goes into my treasure store of the soul but it's not like I can say I did it. We can actually say it's Baba who did it. Because when the purity of that energy starts to access your consciousness and you perform actions from the purity of that place, in order for ego to not come and collect taxes from you, you'd say Baba did it. I didn't do it, Baba did it. And every time you say it's Baba who did it, 
you're keeping the purity of your karma in check. Secondly, you're not developing any arrogance of the I, me, or mine. And third, you're becoming so humble and recognizing this pure energy, this peace, this love, this wisdom, this truth is really who I am, but I'm not there yet. And so now I can say, Bob is helping. Bob is the one that makes us do this show every night. Bob is the one that keeps us going since the pandemic and we've been going full steam ahead. It's Baba that's been putting together the meditations. It's Baba that has done the next normal. It's Baba that did the spiritual vaccine hour. It's Baba that's been taking care of Sister Gita, Brother Santosh, the whole group of us. And what does that mean? It's the purity of the energy that is sustaining us. It's the purity of love. It's the purity of peace. It's Baba. It's God. It's the best of the best that is moving us. So today we want to explore the whole philosophy of karma and I believe I have a PowerPoint coming up and we're going to kind of go through that a little bit about the whole notion of karma and what it means and why it's so important for us to understand. Ready? Get your pen and paper, everybody set to go. All the actions a person makes both with their body and in their mind, all activity creates karma. Thought, word, and deed also has a karmic return or karmic um, definition or consequence based on, again, what's your state of awareness during that particular time, okay? Okay, so think about all the actions you have performed. Do you remember them? No. Do you remember all the thoughts you had today? No. Do you remember every word you spoke today? No. But you did perform karmas all day today, didn't you? So what state of intention, where were you consciously? Did you think of yourself as a soul performing these karmas? Or were you thinking of yourself as a man, a woman, your name, your position, your title? Okay. So there's a saying about karma, you know, what goes around comes around. The meaning of karma is in the intention. The intention behind action is what matters. The intention behind your actions, that is what matters. It's in the Bhagavad Gita. So we have positive and we have negative karma. Positive karma is when I perform actions through my thoughts, words, or deeds from soul consciousness. When I'm soul conscious, my actions will be positive. When I'm body conscious, I start to serve karmas that are not so beneficial for me in the future. Body conscious karmas actually are the genesis to all of my obstacles and difficulties in life. Whenever I perform actions that are based on soul consciousness or God consciousness, those karmas will always be free-flowing and they'll feel like the wind beneath my wings. So when I am in positive karmic um, vortex, there is love in my nature, vibrations in my thoughts. There is peace. There's happiness. There's purity. There's joy. There's knowledge, there's wisdom. Think about it, when you perform an act and you are in the embodied state of these qualities, you can rest assured your future is bright. When we begin to lose that future of brightness, and we are taking a lot from the negative experiences of the past or the past karmic accounts keep pulling us into the present, right? Like presently, let's say if I am s sitting here and I'm thinking about somebody who just was so annoying to me while I'm talking to you, then I'm actually mixing my karma. So in one way, I'm doing something good by sharing knowledge, but in another way, 
I'm having a negative or a waste thought about somebody. So what's actually getting recorded is the negative and waste thoughts that I'm feeling for the person, even though I'm performing a good deed. Got it, everyone? So what makes karma so intricate and so complex is because many of us do not practice soul conscious enough to be able to, to discern if this thought or emotion or feeling that I'm having while I'm performing this action, if this is something I can live with, if this is my consequence that I want to live with. So when we create the negative karma, there's algae. It's algae driven. Anger, lust, greed, attachment, or ego. Now how many of us are in that genre? All of us on the planet. And that's why the world is in the condition that it's in today. So what Baba wants, Baba wants us to remove the algae from the consciousness of the soul so that we don't have to endure so much negative situations. Social media becomes a really good venue to create virtual good or negative karma. So you have to be very mindful what you like, what you choose to share, and also what you choose to comment on but also where you actually pause when you're scrolling through your social media. That also is a form of creating karma. Once um, some friends of mine, it was a group email, and they sent me something that was focused on the current leadership of the country. And it was in humor, but I basically, and I didn't, didn't know what to expect. But after I sort of saw it halfway through, I just very sweetly emailed everybody back and say, guys, thanks a lot for, for sharing this, but I'm begging you, if you're going to share anything, share something that uplifts our humanity and not something that is going to bring it down any further. Needless to say, they never sent me an email again, but at least I won't be getting an email that says something unkind about the leadership of our country. I don't want to support that energy and vibrations. I might not agree with everything the leadership is doing, but I don't want to add to the negative vibrations that goes towards the leader of this country. So again, to what extent am I creating good karma? And even when we were driving in today um, from being out today, we ended up talking about the race in North Carolina or South Carolina or Texas. And we could see how some of our emotions were getting built and kind of just says, oh, well, let's stop here. You know, we don't need to go any further. So we can sense when the vibrations are changing and it just can slip in a second, everyone, which is why we have to keep checking if we're soul conscious or body conscious. So if you think about the whole boomerang effect or what goes around comes around, then you'll keep your circle quite positive. You'd say good words, you would think good thoughts, you would do good deeds because what goes around comes around. And that's why when we do something that's not pleasing to the soul, um, we feel it inside like something's not right. I, I've just created something that I think I'm gonna have to pay the price for it later. So when we become that accountable, then we will become more the masters to carve out the destiny that we want because now there's no need to blame anyone. I can't blame anyone for whatever is happening to or for me. I just need to be responsible to get myself out of situations that I find myself in. And that's where you can build a lot of resilience, a lot of courage, a lot of power, because you are the one that have to lift yourself up, not something magical happening you know, from somebody or from the sky. You have to accept, you know what? My original nature is a pure soul. God is the ocean of purity. I have to remember Baba more and more. And you know what? I'm responsible for my choices. Once you hold that fundamental tenant in your awareness, you will never criticize, judge, or blame another human being from this point onwards. It'll be a waste of your time and energy. And it wouldn't be good karma. So when you create positive karma, do it now. Because whatever karmas you perform today, will become your future. So you get to choose, you get to decide, you have the opportunity. So how about making that shift? Yes, I think that's about it, right? So what's your choice today?
What are you planning to do in terms of the changes that you'd like to make in your life today? You know, that's the food, that's the food for thought. What's the shift that you're willing to make as of today? What are you willing to give up today? Hmm? <laughs> so once you can decide to give up something that you feel hasn't been very healthy for you, imagine how your karmic energy is going to change completely. Try to learn a new language and you'll see how your karmic energy shifts. Buy a new, a new bl blouse or shirt that you would never wear normally. Fix your hair in a different way. Um, look at your husband with different eyes. Speak to your children in a, in a different tone. Think of your in-laws in a different way. Think of your manager in a completely different form or way that you are accustomed to think in them. And see how everything in you feels like it's, it's breaking apart. And that goes to show how deeply rooted these karmas are. So when we do start to change and shift, the way we're seeing ourselves and each other, you better believe your whole world's going to change. And the most important thing to shift is your vision. I'm a soul and I'm playing a part through this body. I'm a peaceful soul and I'm performing peaceful actions through this body. I'm a pure soul and I am looking through these eyes at another pure being. That sort of a level of consciousness will shift completely the way karmas will find you. We have a short video, about five minutes. It um, was made by some of our brothers in India, and it gives you some more deeper insights about karma. When you come back, we'll have a nice little meditation, music meditation, just to settle in it, because sometimes it could be a little bit lot, because the whole notion with karma is saying, I'm responsible for my life. And sometimes we're not always feeling the courage or the strength to accept that. But the minute you do it, everyone, life becomes so smooth and so easy. You feel like you're in charge. You're the master. So enjoy this video. The word karma means deed or action and refers to the universal law of cause and effect, action and reaction that governs the existence of every human being. How does any incident occur in the world and why? How is it decided which soul has to enter which particular womb whether the body should be male or female and where in this world. There are several such questions that compel us to search for right answers. Why are we here? Why was I born here and he there? Why am I like this and she like that? Why such a thing happened in such a way? Did someone write a script saying, this is how it ought to occur? Each act will yield a result, either in this life or any future life. The answers lie in one eternal truth that I receive in return for whatever I do. It acts with complete impartiality. This is the law of karma or the law of action and reaction. Any law of the world can be changed, but not this. No person on earth can evade this law, nor can anybody make an excuse. The law of karma is inviolable. It mandates that everyone on the planet act with a sense of responsibility. We must acquire the right knowledge of what is appropriate and what is inappropriate action. And we should perform each action with full understanding of its impact on self on others and 
my environment. The effect may occur either now or in the future. I will receive the fruit of my actions. The fruit may be tasty or spoiled. Think before you act. Many of the principles of the law of karma are either misunderstood or forgotten. Some believe that nothing is in our hands, that I am helpless and everything depends on fate. What has happened in the past is over and there is no need to question it, nor is there a need to recall any unpleasant incidences. Those people who do not understand the law of karma draw conclusion based on episodes in life. They do not know what will happen in future. They should wait for the scenes to unfold. Cameras, cameras, cameras. So cherry and fresh look, important part of the in a shocking incident today, British Airways flight BA582 from Mumbai to Manchester. One should understand that for every occurrence, there is a cause and reason. My future depends on what I do this moment. I write the script for my life using the pen of elevated actions or karma. As you sow, so you reap.
Om Shanti everyone, welcome back. So we shared so far on this third session on karma. We talked about the whole boomerang effect, what goes around comes around. We did a PowerPoint on that about positive karma, negative karma, and how it's really rooted in the intention behind your choice. And then we also looked at a video, a five minute video, that was basically giving a little description of how we don't know why certain events are occurring in our lives, but it might have some sort of an implication of a choice that I've made in the past or even in a past lifetime. Those are really hard to decipher because in the present life we'll say, I didn't do any of that, I don't deserve this. And many of us can say we really don't deserve certain things, especially if two or three or four lifetimes ago, I did something out of ignorance and had no wisdom like what I have today, then of course stuff happens. However, do remember that every scripture, every book, every seer, every prophet, every sage, every saint has been telling us about the do's and the don'ts to life. And then we have a particular choice to make. And yet some of us are just compelled to give sorrow. Some of us are compelled to express ourselves in anger. Some of us are compelled to be very selfish and very greedy and self-centered. And some of us are just compelled to be very attaching, wanting to possess and control things. And so why we need to have a connection, a relationship with Baba, the Supreme Source, is that that energy of love diffuses, deactivates, weakens, lessens, the vibrations of attachment and of negative karmas which create most of our obstacles. So I want to kind of outline to you how the whole energy of karma comes in and I hope everyone's enjoying it so give me a thumbs up because I love the song that Santosh played after the video because it kind of softened my heart. Yes I am responsible for everything that's happened to me but it doesn't mean that I don't want empathy or compassion for my life. I, I still want a second chance, right? So it was like the song that Santosh played, Om Shanti, to remind me that I am peace and I am pure, despite the choices that I've made. So when we look at the philosophy of karma, it is essential that you look at the philosophy of karma from that place of understanding and intent. Yes, I messed up, but yes, I am pure and peaceful, and I have to make amends with that and I have to believe and pull that energy from out of me because the more I ignore that truth and reality then the more challenges I'm going to attract in my life. So let's take a look at how the karmas are entering our consciousness. Ready? We have five senses. <laughs> five senses. Okay, so Here's how Baba has taught us to create pure karma. When I use my sense of my eyes and I see you, I don't want to see your race, your gender, if you look good or not, do you look like you have something to offer me or not? The first and foremost thing you do to purify the karma of vision is to consider yourself a soul and see that other person, the sparkling soul that they are, the beauty of them, their their purity and their peace. So either you see their virtues or their qualities, which is pure karma, or you see, oh, that's a guy, oh, that's a girl, oh, that's a Muslim, but that's a Jew. All of that puts you still in the category of lower vibrational karma. Every time you see someone in a limited form, it is somehow supporting algae, <laughs> even if it's good. I know that's a hard one to accept, everybody. I know, it took me a while too to really figure it out for myself. So even if I look at, let's say, Sister Gita, and I look at her as my mother, I'm creating a karmic account with her as my mother. But if I see Sister Gita as a soul playing the part as my mother, then I'm neutralizing my karmas with her. So whether she plays the role of a mother well or not, it won't affect me because I'm relating to her at a soul level not on the level of her identity or her role. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so to purify your karma with the vision, practice to see the virtues of others, to see the strengths, the specialities. And if you happen to be in an old or stayed relationship, 
that you've been seeing the limitation and the negativity of the person for a long time, then you're going to have to be very vigilant in practicing to see that one or two good thing in the person. Okay, ears. You have a choice to listen to gossip news or you have a choice to listen to the next normal. <laughs> and the next normal can help you to grow so then you have the karmic responsibility to discern. I want to hear things. I want to listen to music that uplifts me. I want to listen to something that teaches me more about who I can be. I want to listen to that which is positive versus I know some people, they just want to hear gossip. The minute they hear you talking something bad about somebody, and especially if within that group they're jealous of that person, there's a big party going on over there. You'll never see me attending those parties. I have absolutely no interest. And that's why we as a community here can do so much. We invest absolutely no time in gossiping or speaking about people, maybe 5%, because it comes up because now I was remembering when Kanu and I were driving back today that we ended up speaking a little bit about the politics, how easy it slips in. So 5, five or 10%, we have to work on that, definitely. But you can choose to listen to something that uplifts you, or you can choose to listen to that's waste. Good karma, upliftment, negative karma, wasteful thoughts. One of the most interesting things about life, you will get information that's negative, and it stops right here. <laughs> and it stays in your heart for some reason. When somebody keeps telling you something positive, for some reason it goes in one ear, it comes out of the other. Kids, I'm especially talking to you, teenagers, when mom and dad are giving you good advice and you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. But if somebody bullies you at school, you come back home so sad, holding in your consciousness the negativity of what that person said. But why would you choose to only hold on to the negative things? Somebody who has no idea of who you are, why would you believe that? Karma, right? But that will be negative karma. So you want to begin to stop that pattern and that thought form because you know what it's going to get you. Your hands, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and you can use your hands to hurt somebody, you can use your hands to strangle somebody, or you can use your hand to caress, to give help, to plant a tree, to give a donation. You can use your hand for so many good things, to build a house, you can use it to destroy a house. What's the energy of karma which you're going to use touch with? You can choose to speak softly, sweetly, and less, or you can speak profanity, anger, and waste. It's karma, right? Santor says wearing masks might be a good karma because now people are quiet. <laughs> they don't speak as much as they used to. So again, I, the soul, create a thought I perform an act through my senses. When I perform the act through my five senses, based on the intention of the thought, I, the soul, feel the return of that karma or that choice. Is it clear? So however I use my five senses, this, this, are you nosy, are you a nosy person? Are you always up in people's business? Or you're gonna mind your own business? What are you going to do? So I can see the beauty. I can listen to the beauty. I can be charitable. I can speak less, speak sweetly, speak softly. I can mind my own business. Be humble. I'm creating a great karma for the future. So you can see how we are kind of mixing it up, right? The karmas come and the karmas go because of that mixture. So in the teachings of Raj Yoga, the more I connect to Baba's energy, the more I begin to feel the subtle truth of what pure karma feels like and decide, I don't want to perform actions like that anymore. I, I don't want to go down that alley. I, I want a future that's bright. I want a future that's bright. So pure karma, soul consciousness, intentions of purity, karmas that create challenges, obstacles, how did this come? Mind, body, wealth, relationships, four key areas. How well have you done? How much charity and bestowing have you done with your relationships, with money, with health? 
having positive thoughts despite the situation being negative based on how much you have put in in terms of the purity of that intent it'll come back you don't have to worry it might not come back exactly at the time you want it but rest assured it will find you karma has everyone's address here's a meditation on karma for tonight when we come back we can just settle in a little bit cuz i'll be giving you a sweet homework assignment <laughs> enjoy this meditation on karma one of the ways to unlock the door to rapid spiritual growth is to understand the secrets of creating pure karma Every day we live in a world of action. We walk, we talk, we work, we speak. But sometimes we forget to realize that behind every action there is a quality of consciousness. And that quality of consciousness becomes a seed. When we bring it into action, it is sown in the soil of our life, and just like every seed, it will turn into something. some scene some situation some scenario when we understand that our consciousness behind every action is creating our life we feel much more of an incentive to create pure thoughts go ahead now take a deep breath and leave the scenes and sights of your world behind good or bad just let them go and feel yourself slip into a deeper space of quietude feel this quiet pulse of spiritual energy inside of you as you affirm to yourself silently in your mind for the next few moments I am pure, spiritual, clean, fresh energy. Pure as crystal clean waters, untouched by any of the pollutants of the world. Fresh, innocent even of waste, of negativity. Of any thought that you don't need, you are simply pure clean fresh energy affirm it as if it is so not something you have to become but something you already are And now having taken that time to create pure thoughts leave your sanctuary your spiritual workshop and come back to the world ready to sow new seeds with new pure elevated thoughts Perfect, right? Perfect meditation on karma for tonight. I think the more or the sooner we understand to some extent the importance of the philosophy of karma, the sooner we can move on with our lives and um cultivate time and energy by using the leftover good thoughts and words to really benefit our lives and the lives of others rather than waiting for someone to come and apologize to you or or feeling that if you were to forgive someone for what they did you kind of let them off the hook all of these complexities that we go through in our human relationships uh or sometimes we'll think if that person changes then my life will be better or 
Why can't my husband just be like this? Then the family would be great. All of that sort of a thought form, those qualities of thoughts add to my negative experience of karma. Because whenever you as a soul feel like you're losing something, you're losing your patience, you're losing your dignity, you're losing your peace, you're losing a relationship, you're losing money, losing weight is sometimes a good thing, but you're losing something, then there must be something at an energetic level that is saying, you owe me. So let's take a look at how karma is very intricate. Let's say I'm in a relationship with you and I'm really lazy. And all I want from you is just to take, give me that, you should do this, go get that. And I have never once thought about your well-being, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, your financial well-being. My only concern was all about what's in it for me. How am I going to function? You need to serve me. And I do that for decades without even remotely thinking about your well-being. Then I'm reborn in a different form in a different time and I'm finding myself in a relationship where I feel like I'm really being taken advantage of. And I'll tell myself, that's not fair. All I'm asking you is for you and I to have leverage here. I want us to have a 50-50 relationship. And the partner will go, I don't know what you're talking about. I give you everything that you need. But inside of yourself, you're thinking, no, you don't see me, you don't honor me. You don't know me, you don't understand me, you're using me. That's all the proof of some karmas of the past. And the only way I can pay it back is to go back inside of the understanding. I am a pure, powerful, peaceful, full, complete soul. God, the ocean of love, is my beloved, is my father, is my teacher, is my guru, is my friend. And then the soul starts to feel like it's being given what it's asking for from a human being. So what happens in the teachings of Raj Yoga meditation is that the more you go into this deep intimate connection to Baba, then all the karmic debts that are owed to all those past relationships or past lives, they're getting paid off by the experience of the love that you're attaining through your yoga connection or your meditation connection or your relationship with the divine, with God, with Baba. So let me try to break it down again and as practically as I can. Let's say I'm married and I don't feel my husband has given me the respect or the attention that I deserve. So internally, I'm aware I'm a soul and my nature is pure and peaceful, I don't feel it 100%, but I know that's who I will become. Then I'll take that consciousness to Baba and say, Baba, you know what I am, and you know how, I, how, how I'm to be treated. Let me come and sit with you, let me remember you, let me cook a meal for you. And then through that internal mental and spiritual connection, the soul starts to feel like Baba's really taking care of you, in the relationship physically that's not giving you what you want. So what starts to happen, as you the soul start to feel self-sustained and self-fulfilled, when you turn to, like if I turn to my husband, I'm not gonna want to expect much from him anymore because I'm being served through my yoga connection with Baba. Then what I would do is actually bestow on him at a vibrational level of love and peace and respect that something within him will start to awaken and go, I shouldn't treat her like that, you know? She's like a deity, she's like an angel, she's like a god, why do I talk to her like that? Because he'll start to feel at a soul level what he's doing is not right. So that's why whenever you transform the energy of your karma and raise your vibrations, into pure karmic energy and pure karmic vibrations, it starts to ripple out and impact your family members, your friends, your colleagues at work, the environment, and the world at large. So when you think about Baba having 9,000 branches in 120 countries, and all of those Brahmins are vibrating 
this energy everywhere they go. The world's going to become golden age soon. We have no doubt about that. We're so clear. What's the exact date and time? That we don't know. <laughs> but we feel the golden age is coming because we can feel within our own personality there's a golden age personality that's being shaped. So our wish for you is for you to develop that golden age personality and move away from all of that negative pattern, you know, that way of thinking and seeing the self. No, that's not what I want. That's not who I am. Om Shanti. I'm here to remember Baba. And through Baba's remembrance, all the negative karmas gets absolved. There is a saying in the advanced classes that the more loving remembrance you have for Baba, the more the negative experiences of the past disappear. For those of you who have been in a relationship where you thought you were madly in love with someone and you had the intentions of oh, we're going to get married, we're going to have kids, two, three years later something happens. Maybe there is infidelity. Maybe there are emotional issues. Maybe there are red flags. Maybe you encounter a conflict of personalities and you just realize, I can't spend the rest of my life with this woman or with this man, right? And then you break it. Maybe you have a year hiatus, maybe two months, two, two years. I don't know the track record, maybe two months or three months or four months. And out of nowhere, you meet somebody and you talk to them and you're friends and you're very cautious. You don't want to get another broken heart. But you go into the relationship, and before you know it, after a while, you're so in love, you don't even remember the old relationship anymore. So when you fall in love with the energy of God, you won't remember the mistakes you've made anymore. And so you won't feel guilty about what has happened. And you won't feel this deep sense of, sense of loss or lack of worthiness. Because the energy of the love that you're feeling from Baba just says, I don't care what you've done. All I know right now with me is the most important moment of our life. And so the soul and God really build a deep, deep relationship. And when that relationship between you, the soul, and God, the Supreme Soul, is created, then you're just compelled to perform good karmas. Because the two of you are like two peas in a pod. Like you have the same vision, the same goals. You, you understand each other. Baba wants to lift you up. And you trust Baba is going to do that. And you will give him everything of your heart. Where you start to feel this blossoming taking place within your being. Okay. So I hope that that's helping you to sort of understand the depth of karma and why this is the most powerful time for you to begin to pay attention to the small decisions that you make. Be kind, be thoughtful, be understanding, keep your spaces clear, keep things in your house in order, make sure you've got things coming together for you so that it can support you in the long run. Little by little, I'm not saying you do everything in a, in a you know, swaha immediately, but Take it one day at a time. Think about what is it in you now that you really want to change? What thought form do you want to have different inside of you so it attracts a different reality for you? If you really mean it and you really want to change, nothing can get in your way. No one and no thing can get in your way to stop you from going where you want to go. Okay? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us tonight. And let me see who we have on today watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Asmita, Louise, hello. Om Shanti, Minakshi, Kailash, Nikki, Bharti, Tonya, Madhavi, Erika, Samantha, Om Shanti, Indu, and Shoba, Nagrashi, Parveen, Praveen Bhai, nice to have you. And uh, Grace, welcome to the tribe. Denise Withers, Zora, nice to have you back on. Yesvi, Susanna, Om Shanti, Annette, Aditi, Nikhil Kumar, Ranju, Kushali, all of you. Thank you so much.
for joining us and I hope you've been enjoying getting the Raj Yoga course in this very unique freestyled way to really understand this whole thing. Hi Mercedes, Om Shanti, como estas? Buenas tardes. That now once this awakening and opening happens for you everyone, you are going to be soaring like you will not believe. If you're not soaring already on this third lesson, then you will. At some point something has got to be shifting in you. And of course tomorrow we'll go deeper into the whole game of, you know, things are cyclical instead of linear. And tomorrow we're going to focus on why are we really here and what's the part that you are here to play, which I think is huge. Once you've understood that every single one of us we're basically playing out our karmic realities. We'll stop blaming people. This one is exactly the way they're supposed to be. Uh, the leader of the country is exactly the way they're supposed to be. The leader of that country, that religious leader, my daughter, my son, my husband, me, I, we're exactly the way we're supposed to be. But when it comes on just to you, you have the power to control how you want to feel and do things. So what do you want to change? And are you serious about sustaining that change and shift? So hopefully you wrote your letter to Baba last night and this morning, and I'm sure that must have moved you again. If you're sincere and serious about the transformation needed for you, you will value everything that we're saying in this class, in these classes, because I know how much they can awaken you into becoming a completely profoundly powerful person on the planet. So today's homework assignment is to perform three acts completely different. Let's say if you're a meat eater, you're deciding to do just vegetarian for a whole day. See how you feel. You can feel the resistance of the old karma. Let's say that you're accustomed to, you know, complaining or nagging your spouse at home. Tonight and tomorrow you decide to only be kind and sweet. So whatever it is, perform three actions that are completely different than what you're accustomed of doing, but let it be three actions that are rooted in love, peace, purity, truth, and joy. In addition to that, a second practice, look at everyone in the state of soul consciousness. Now don't go looking at them like this, I'm seeing the soul. <laughs> no, talk to them very naturally. Go behind your eye, remind yourself I'm a peaceful soul. I'm speaking to my husband, I'm speaking to my wife, I'm speaking to my child, I'm speaking to my in-law, I'm speaking to my boss on Zoom. But come from the place of being a peaceful being and then speak to that person. Practice that for tonight and tomorrow and I can guarantee it, you're going to feel a shift again. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be with our beautiful tribe. Thanks to everyone for all of your blessings and good wishes. And um, hopefully you're enjoying your next normal, which is to be an awakened person, a person with dignity, honor, self-respect, wisdom, sense of humor, purity, beauty, love, and happiness. Have a great evening tonight. Take care of each other. Om Shanti. We find our nation on a precipice. True tipping point. Is this the moment that will finally change our country? broken system it was built to function exactly as it is we must respond with bold action this is our country too we can build new systems that do what they should come on, come on, march on the regular. we are united we are standing all the way, all the way. and we are going to fight this fight Across this country. When we work and
And when we fight and when we march and when we speak up and when we offer solutions, we win. I'ma keep on running cause a winner don't quit on no always the right time to celebrate women and black women in particular. It is an opportunity to show the nation and the world that we will act. It has been an inspiration. You have the choice and it is that choice that gives you power. Vote. Vote like your life depends on it because it does. That is what we need next. Action. Hi everyone, it's Sister Jenna from America Meditating Radio. I hope you've been enjoying Wisish, which you can get live on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube from 8.30 a.m. to 8.45, but you can also get it on demand 24-7. It's going to be your power boost for the morning. It's your daily dose for the soul. It's just going to encourage you to make the day that much more valuable. So join us. Looking forward to seeing you. My glorious, my glorious life. My glorious, my glorious. 